Well, hello everyone, welcome back, welcome back to it. So today we'll be playing The Wandering Village. In my last video of The Wandering Village, I made an early access review, and in that review I stated uh, that we would do a 100 day challenge on Veterans Mode for The Wandering Village. Because suffice it to say, I'm really enjoying my time with The Wandering... The Wandering? <laughs> suffice it to say, I'm enjoying my time with The Wandering Village, and... Uh, I think it's at the lower difficulties it can feel um, a little easy I guess but veteran mode I feel like presents a, a really good challenge although admittedly veteran mode is not very balanced uh, just so you know we have customized difficulty we can have it where villagers don't die on boot doesn't die and no manual saving so that's like Iron Man mode so here are the three difficulties we have novice uh, the village elder shows you the ropes of how to care for your village so this is very much the, the tutorial aspect of it then we have Adept, uh, to start in a safe, familiar territory to take care of your villagers uh, as you slowly venture into a more dangerous regions recommended for intermediate players. You know, even, even this level, I'd say it's a little too easy. Uh, and Veteran Mode, uh, the world is harsh and an unforgiving place. Uh, so yeah, we may just lose on the onset. A lot of it is about like the first 20 days and what happens within the first 20 days. So we'll actually see that, I'll, I'll tell you it as we play. Let's, let's start the damn thing, shall we? Driven from our homes by the toxic spores, we kept wandering, looking for shelter. But not in our wildest dreams did we imagine what we would find. Sick. Okay, so I wanted to get us in here because I want to show you what I mean. Also, we have to pause on our own right away. Did we pause? Okay, good. Also, when you load in, no matter what difficulty, the game doesn't auto-pause for some reason. I think that's an oversight. You have to pause when you first start. Every second is uh, of great importance. Okay, so this is what I meant. So a lot of the game early on, especially at this level of difficulty, often depends on the RNG spawn that you get in the world. So right now, I think pink means safe. I'm not entirely sure what pink means in terms of biome and terrain. We'll we'll find out though. It's it's a toss up. I'm not entirely sure what, what pink means. So it looks like we're okay early on. In veteran difficulty, one of the first things we wanna do is we wanna check what we have in store here. So it looks like we have a lot of green and this is where we have a, a lot of dirt soil. Um, and then we have the head. What I found to be most efficient for me in my playstyle is to actually build near the the buttocks. <laughs> oh yeah, in case you don't know, the giant creature that we are on is called Anbu. Our little colossus here, our little colossus, that's what you call an oxymoron. We kind of want to build by the bum of the creature, and the reason for it is because this is the research tree. We want to research dung collector. Now, we don't want that right away, but the reason why we want something like a dung collector is not just because, as you would imagine, dung could be turned into fertilizer, which is through compost heap, but this very same building, this compost heap, can make biogas. Now, biogas is important because you use that resource for your decontaminators, and the decontaminators are those uh, guys you see uh, with the flamethrowers on their backs that kill poisonous toxic plants that grow on Ambu. And that is by far the biggest challenge of the game. One tiny spore uh, can pollute the entire world and create this poisonous toxic uh, toxin. And um, to cure it, you need to do like more uh, research. Uh, for example, uh, you would need a village doctor to heal you. Uh, right now, at the very beginning, they actually allow you to develop or to grow uh, herbs that produce the herbs that you need for a village doctor. However, you can't use the herbs by themselves. So there's no like low yield uh, application of herbs. You need a village doctor to heal you. So with all those additional resources, you have to kind of think about it as time. Because Anbu is an ever-moving creature, you have to sort of be adaptable and lean into where Anbu goes. Now, we can later on, we can choose to change Anbu's direction through trust, building trust, and using this called the Horn Blower. This also takes considerable time to do, and right off the bat, you kind of want to focus on uh, having food and um, sort of 
building a relatively working, I guess you could say, ecosystem for your villagers to keep them active and then proactive in producing goods. So let me just go ahead and start building. And again, we're going to focus on the bum part. Oh, again, okay, again. Okay. So why do we want to do that? So by building near the bum, we can actually uh, reduce the amount of time our villagers have to travel to deposit things. So we can only build a dunk collector near the back of Anbu. And once we build that there, then we can focus on um, building the compost heap and then the uh, decontaminator. So ideally, we would build like one building here and the next building there and then the next. So it's like a chain, right? So it just moves up the way and just saves time because I found out um, as I started playing that if you like build the, the dunk collector here, which again, you have to, uh, you'll actually see later down the line that it's actually restricted. And then you build the compost here, which makes sense. But let's say you wanted to build a decontaminator for whatever reason, because there's a, there's a lar large density of forest here. Let's say you want to build a decontaminator over here. What I found out early on, especially if you don't stockpile like biogas, that can take a long time for your people to travel from one distance to the other. It's, it's normally better to have everything bunched up here and then have your flamethrower guys go on their own and actually walk the distance to... Uh, knock out some of the toxic plants okay i've been talking forever let's start looking at some planning so i'm not the best city planner i'll openly admit that to you what i do know is we have to build where our people uh sort of centralize to what that made no sense whatsoever our villagers the way they work these folks here by the way if you uh like want to participate and like have these villagers be named comment down below and let me know uh the name you want me to use and i will definitely uh you know include you in the game i think that'd be a lot of fun the way these villagers work is that they centralize to where food is they use kitchens as sort of their home point so oftentimes for example if you tell them to like cut this whole thing down i'm gonna go ahead and say hey cut all that all that down oftentimes you can see a villager like walk He'll cut down the tree and then there'll be, you know, like wood for him to collect or her for to collect and they just won't collect it. They'll like walk all the way back to like where the kitchen is and eat there for whatever reason and then build something or collect it. So there's a lot of ways to think about how are, how are we going to cut through and mitigate all that um, walking essentially because I'm going to be real with you. This map is actually really, really big for my two successful playthroughs or really any of my playthroughs of this game i have not used all of this map there's just it's there's so much to build here i don't know if that's like an like a a thing where for right now the devs just want a lot of space for for folks to build on just you know to play around with and be creative but what I've often found is that this map is so big, it actually kind of works against you. Distance is a big factor. Now, if I want to build near the bum, one of the things I like to start off doing is actually um, getting a berry gatherer. Berry farms very early on are good because they're sustainable. In the mid game, they can be subject to catastrophic like famines and blights, I should say more. Yeah, catastrophic blights and all that stuff. So now we want to look at efficiency. We have 54 efficiency. If we place it here, I'm just looking if we can get any better results. We got 54 there, so that's pr that's actually really good. It may not be the best. I can I can barely see some of the stuff. You can't double click it and then have everything show up like in other colony sims. Um, I'm imagining those are all future uh, updates and stuff like that as the UI develops. But so what I like to do is I like to so, like to just put it like that just to see if uh, if there are hidden berries here and, and how would they affect efficiency. So it does look like 54 is kind of our best shot here. So I don't know this to be true. I tried this last game and I think it worked out, but it could just be my imagination. So I read this post on Reddit where they said you can actually build roads and uh, surround berry farm and that berries will grow within the radius. So it's like you can kind of control where berries grow. I'm not entirely sure if that's true or not. I can't tell if it made a big difference. I know trees grew within the radius though. Berries, not so much. Although berries and stuff, they'll kind of grow over time. So we might get lucky and actually find a field of berries that have really high efficiency um, if we're lucky enough to survive. So what I want to kind of do is think about, okay, we're going to head to a pink area. And for me, I can't quite recall if we encounter poison that early on, but I'm going to assume that we 
don't. I'm gonna work towards actually us building the kitchen first. And the reason for that... Oh, shoot. Okay, there you go. And the reason for that is because we're not gonna be uh, facing any strong climate pressures. So we can use that and then use a kitchen and then start on our beet farms. You may consider going cactus plant and corn plant or tomato plant if you if you happen to have rolled an environment where Anbu heads to a desert, which definitely has happened. There's actually a pretty cool thing about the desert and as we develop, I'm gonna hope to try to lead Anbu to go to deserts more often in that there is no pollutant, there's no toxic areas in the desert. So it's actually a very nifty way of, you know, saving time and buying yourself some time as you build up. Anyways, okay. So we have our berry plant there. I'm gonna think about um, where I kind of want to set my workers post and my research areas. Workers posts are a good way to get workers to get a, a minimum boost to their efficiency in terms of working, but they also uh, employ workers to do specific jobs. And research buildings are, you know, your research buildings. The thing about workers post is that your villagers don't actually check in here unless you employ them or fire them from the job. So they only really come here once. Research buildings are often visited because researchers will go here to research and then leave to the kitchen to eat. Houses definitely also help with poisonous air and toxin, and they also help with uh, villagers' productivity. So you want to build these too, but, uh, but just like the workers' post, your villagers don't actually frequent the tents. So you can kind of consider these two to build them out of the way. So now that we've built the berry gathering stuff thing, I kind of want to think about where am I going to put my kitchen, where am I going to put my farm, and then I will try to build around that. And by the way, these farm fields are massive and you don't need to utilize every bit of the space that a farm has. It's nice to be able to do that, but you don't have to because what I've often found in my playthrough is that um, you don't actually use up a lot of the space. I'm not entirely sure why. So a lot of the bottleneck for farming comes from how much water you have because water is used for planting crops. Your villagers don't actually drink the water, but they use it to plant crops. And if I had, I have many instances where I've had plenty of water and still having crops not being utilized or areas uh, of plotted land not being utilized for growing. So from that perspective, I, I think they're just, for whatever reason, they just don't utilize every aspect of the farm, at least from my experience. What I like to do is I like to try to build roads that encompass farms here. Let me just show you. Um, in fact, I did a lot of talking. I'm going to see if I can actually maybe do like a speed build where I just start building it and then explain it afterwards because uh, we haven't done anything so far. So let me see what I can do and then I will report back to you. Alrighty, uh, welcome back. Uh, so uh, my thinking was, and if you're wondering what these posts are, they're essentially dirt roads. Let's go ahead and start the game. I'm gonna start it in one speed. And they're gonna collect resources here. They're actually gonna eat. One of the biggest problems with this game, honestly, is that we have a pile of berries here and they can't really haul them anywhere. I mean, I'm, I went ahead and, let me go ahead and set that there. Build a pantry in hopes that they get that and they put this here so that they don't have to keep walking back to eat this, but. It's a pain, it is what it is. You know, typically you'd like to spawn somewhere, you know, where your ideal location is so that if they do go back to eat, they can, they don't have to walk so far away, but look, it's gonna be a pain. Uh, like I said earlier, food is the central hub for a lot of these villagers and we don't know when their needs are. So you don't know when they eat exactly. So you can oftentimes see them build something and then head back and uh, eat or whatever. Anyways, let me talk to you a little bit about my village that I've plotted out so far. Up here we have my uh, first farm. This is gonna be our main farm right now. Uh, I This is also a farm. I don't know what allows you to hit this button, the disable button. Sometimes it appears, sometimes it doesn't. I'm gonna hope to disable this or have this be low priority. In fact, if I just set it like that, does that mean they're not going to even consider it? I hope so. This is going to be our low priority farm. This is going to be our secondary farm for other growing stuffs. 
Um, these are our, this is going to be our industry. We have our carpenter and our stone cutter and our material storage right in the center here. I find this to be most effective for whatever reason, uh, just again, to mitigate travel distance. This is where we'll build our kitchen, this empty space. Right now, we don't have a kitchen to plot because it's a research. Um, also, our researchers will be right here. So we're going to go ahead and speed that up. Not sure if they will be able to get to in time, but researchers will be here. They will then walk to the kitchen to eat. Uh, here's our berries. They will then deposit things, hopefully, to the kitchen or to the pantry when this gets built. Then here we have our air wells. This is how you collect water. And when they, the, you'll use the water for planting again, like I mentioned before. Hopefully, we can get that into the water tank. You kind of want to build this whole irrigation system, again, really, uh, co like, compact together. Here's where we have some houses. Again, they're off to the side. And here's a worker's post as well. They're, they're off to the side. They, these are not visited often, so I feel like you can push them out to the side. Is it aesthetic? Uh, that is, <laughs> is it aesthetically pleasing? I don't think so. In fact, I think it looks ugly. But we can worry about prettying up a lot of the city uh, after we've sort of uh, gotten a foothold in terms of survival. Anbu has about a day to sleep, and then we go. We can start moving. Now, here's the thing: if we were actually going to um, a desert biome, like if this was a desert biome, I would have actually not have built the air wells or started queuing them up to be built i would have instead researched a uh, cactus plantation because cactus plantation is what we would need for water and then i would have reprioritized this second farm would be built so one farm would be producing cactus which gives you water the other farm would be producing uh beets here we go we actually got this up i'm actually surprised how quickly they did that now i'm actually going to be a little uh a little cautious about this and build that much plot of land. That's even probably a little too much, if I'm being quite honest. If you build too much, they actually uh, will continue to use as much water as they can to plant. Now, again, like I mentioned earlier, once I've actually had, you know, all this queued up to be used for, ir for crop and irrigation and all that stuff, didn't end up happening. So I'm not entirely sure what the AI is about in terms of filling up the your farm. Yeah, it's it's best just to queue up what you think you can hold for just like two people. Awesome that this is built. I'm actually going to have, yeah, that's two people is fine. Might be a little excessive. Uh, the reason for it is because we have plenty of food here, you know, and so you want to be able to utilize as many workers as you can. Here we're building the workers post, which is great because this will help uh, make your workers more productive. In fact, you kind of want to build these homes right away as well. I'm going to go ahead and queue them up to max priority um, just because, again, you want your workers working quickly. Um, and any way you can do that is through these early uh, homes here and all that stuff. So. We're going to go ahead and use general workers, fill that up to five, just to make sure that the villagers that we do have doing things will be as productive as they can be. If you have workers that are technically unemployed, they'll still, uh, I think, do like general worker stuff. So they just won't get the boon. So yeah, they're building this. They're prioritizing the street, which I'm kind of... Okay, you know what? I, I think what's happening is that they need resources, like basic resources. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and queue up things to be cut so harvest crops harvest trees let's do this so that way when i do this we're only getting the trees then i'm gonna do priority now here's the the lame thing about it is that we can't actually prioritize just the trees if we do this we're, we're gonna hit like even the roads to be queued up that that works out we can do this we just have to make sure that we don't hit the streets i mean you can if you want to build the streets early on um you know, it's not too bad, but it can be feel like a waste of time when they're having to build streets when you want them just to cut trees. These roads or, or streets, I should say, are there to help them walk faster, but understandably they're low on the on the queue because they, you can build anywhere. And this, these are just to help maximize their speed. Later on, you can actually research uh, stone roads. I've never really gone to that point <laughs> to, have, to be privileged enough to use stone roads, but they are there. So hopefully them by them cutting all this stuff down it will s get them back to building i think that's what the issue is also these are onbu spikes which you can mine but they they make onbu very angry they reduce trust and right now when trust is a commodity we can't risk doing that what we hope to achieve is to build a horn blower as soon as possible 
and then sort of roll the dice and see if he will listen to us or, sh or it will listen to us. We don't know the gender of the uh, Von Boo. Uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we can work to build that trust first. Now, eventually as the game continues, you're going to have to negotiate the trust that you have with Anbu. Anbu? <laughs> keep saying Anvu. I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. Eventually you're going to have to negotiate the and balance the trust you have with Anbu and the, the resources you need. I don't think we'll ever come to a point where we're going to have to mine on boost spikes, but one thing that could be uh, a thing that we can consider is bile. So a bile extractor takes uh, from on boost health and its gallbladder to produce um, a substance called bile, I think it's called. Um, and bile is essentially what your flamethrowers use to kill the toxic plants and use as fire. Remember how I said the dung collector, you click dung, and then you use a compost heap to produce biogas, um, and then that would turn into fire. Or you can skip the whole process and just get bile extractor and take from Anbu's health. But when you do that, you destroy, you erode trust and you erode its, its health, which you will then have to later, you know, heal Anbu, of course, because you want to have Anbu live and you want to build that trust again. So, because that trust can lead to a lot of good things like, you know, um, being able to run, uh, through scorching hot areas or escaping a tornado or, or redirecting Anbu to go to a path that uh, may not have a poisonous forest versus another. So trust is incredibly important and you you kind of have to debate like, okay, I'm willing to lose Anbu's trust here just to save its own life because Anbu doesn't know any better. One of the things we, we, have to, we may consider worrying about, we're going to have to see by day 20 where Anbu is migrating because Anbu can starve to death and, that, and that's kind of weird to me because Ambu is like a living creature that migrates and I would imagine it has like migrating patterns or areas that it knows and feeding spots that it knows but you know I, I suppose maybe if you tell Ambu to stop in certain areas or you redirect Ambu that can mess to yeah it can mess up where the original feeding spots are so that can cause problems but eventually you know by day 20 if Anbu starts getting really really hungry we're gonna have to start researching ways to feed Anbu and that is like so Oh, that can be so difficult sometimes because it takes three to get there. So if you're lagging on a horn blower and um, not really working towards this area of the research tree, oh, it can be so difficult because you have to do one research here, you have to do another research here in the Anbu kitchen. Then you have to do uh, the, the, the tribuche, the feeding tribuche, all of which need to be staffed. And you would have to uh, get the mycologist farm if I can pull it up here, mycologist farm. So this is the ingredients that you will use to feed Anbu. He, Anbu eats mushrooms. Um, yeah, he loves Burning Man. Early on, you'll actually discover that one of the more difficult aspects of this game is not having enough people. So uh, that often that often becomes a, a huge bottleneck. If by day 30, you're still, you still only have 16 people, it's so difficult because you need to manage you need to be able to do more, but you don't have the people to do it. And again, these are indiv these villagers are more of a collective than they are individuals. So they don't. Uh, so what I mean by that is that stats don't really matter per villager. Like in some colony sims, not all. Frostpunk was very much the same way. It operated the same way as this. Uh, another colony sim is like Rimworld. You know where villagers or pawns, I guess in that game you could say, are treated more as individuals. They have individual stats that help them stand out. In games like this or like in Frost punk you you work as a collective oh we're getting up we're standing up we're standing up there's on boo he's standing up and because you work as a collective you have to sort of get a general feel and understanding of how quickly an, uh, one villager works and how and how quickly things can grow just over time and when you're thinking about feeding on boo you're thinking about growing a, a, a mycologist farm you're thinking of doing all these different things uh, that's all time and you're, it's a race against time every time Anbu moves. So it can be very difficult when Anbu gets hungry. I've often found that the biggest challenges for me have been one, the number one challenge is toxic plants and two, keeping Anbu fed because Anbu didn't go to, you know, a feeding spot or what have you. Um, so we, we seem to be in a good place right now. We've built some tents, which is great. Looks like we're bottlenecked with base resources. You'll find that that wood and stone are your base resources, and you kind of want to rush the stone cutter and carpenter. A lot of the higher stuffs, like kitchen, require building components that is like 
made from Stonecutter and uh, and Carpenter. So you can't just sleep on these two buildings. You kind of have to rush them a little bit, but you also need base resources. And the best way to do that is not just by queuing them up. There's no like workers roster, so you can't, you know, just navigate it that way. You have to prioritize uh, areas. And also there's not like a, a building that's specific to cutting trees like you don't build a carpenter area and then the carpenters will if they don't have any wood they'll go and fetch the wood themselves they don't do that so you have to move your workers by through priorities so yeah you really have to keep on top of uh what's being done when unfortunately so these are the little notifications that we have here i'm gonna be honest with you they're not very good like they just sort of happen and they can and a lot of important stuff can happen here and you can just lose track of it. I really wish there was a lot more pausing and notifications that just spring up. It makes for a cleaner space UI wise, I suppose, in that in the sense that, you know, you can see more of the map, but in terms of like informational feedback, it can be kind of difficult. Again, you know, I, I will say that only really matters at the higher difficulties. It doesn't, I never felt like it actually mattered in like adept or novice. But like in veteran mode where it is not it's not balanced and it can it's very it can feel very unfair because there's a lot of RNG that takes place. This stuff then becomes much more important. And I think a game really shows itself at the higher difficulties, because at the higher difficulties, you start recognizing problems. You start recognizing uh, incredibly good things about a game, like what building does what. Like, for example, I made this criticism in my early access review that the herbalist and the mycologist farm are actually bad buildings to get right away because they're they're dead end resources. So these are both farms, right? But if you use the mycologist farm, you're going to get mushrooms. Well, you can't do anything with mushrooms. If you have uh, an herbalist farm, you'll get herbs, but the herbs do nothing on their own. So herbs are only uh, herbs are only used for as we talked about earlier with the village doctor and mushrooms are only good to, for making you know food for Anbu but on their own they do nothing so in terms of having like way too many buildings available to you and and just not knowing what to do with them herbalist farm and mycologist farm are are kind of that in fact I'd actually argue that you should have the mycologist farm and the herb farm be one thing the big difference here with the mycologist farm is that you have to build it in dirt soil for mushrooms to grow. For the herb uh, farm, it's different. It, it functions just like a regular farm and where you need it to build on green dirt. So I would actually argue you could, you should probably have this as one building because oftentimes like you can, you know, spread it out and be like, oh, 50% of it is in the green, 50% of it's in the dirt. Um, and I, I think honestly, you will always have that. I have yet to run into a map where there's just few patches of dirt and few patches of green. I've never had it one way or the other. Or you could have a utilitarian farm that's of smaller size and then have it function that way. Because I'm gonna be real with you, like I mentioned earlier, you could plop like this herbalist farm down. They're not gonna use all of this. You can have as much water in the world and they will not uh, use all of the available space. I don't know why, that has been my experience. Again, I could be wrong. I may be missing something there, but I've just never seen them use it. And so you have all this available space that's just not being used. And then you have like two separate buildings that have what I would call like dead end resources. Again, they're not dead end if you can then research a village doctor to make use of the herbalist farm or an Anbu kitchen to make use of the mycologist farm. But if you haven't researched that, they do nothing for you. And then you just have these buildings there. And if I was relatively new or when I was relatively new to the game, I saw this stuff and I was like, oh, is this like a regular farm? Like what, what do I do with it? I mean, of course, read the description. That would be very helpful. But you just, you have two buildings here that, that are just kind of useless right now. All right, so let me go ahead and queue up some more um, uh, base resources to be cut down. Because again, that's what's stopping us from building right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Uh, and because I'm really lazy, I'm just gonna do this now. <laughs> What we'll do, oh cool, we built this. This is great, because that means we're gonna put all the wood and all the stone here. So what we can do is, we can start doing this as well. Oh yeah, pantry, can we get the pantry going? So whenever they, you know, get berries or they get uh, beets, they can put them in the pantry and then hopefully villagers will start eating from here. But as of right now, villagers are just wasting tremendous amount of time walking to this area. 
It's, oh, it's such a bummer. So, oh, this is good. This is good. In some playthroughs, you don't even get this. But we have nomads up ahead, which is great because it means that we can get more people. In the early game, as mentioned earlier, the more people you have, the better it will be. And you might be thinking, oh, but don't you, aren't you worried about food or whatever? The more people you have, the faster you can farm. That's really the way it is. Uh, you can never have enough people. In fact, I think a happy medium of people is like 60. If you can always say yes to get more uh, to get more people, you should do it. The only thing that really stops you from getting people is if they're poisoned, not if they're hungry. Because poison or, uh, yeah, just uh, illness can spread throughout a village because they don't wear their face masks. No, okay. <laughs> they do cover half of their face, so. But that thing spreads. You know, they don't social distance or hard at work. And if you don't have a good village doctor or a good way of recovering um, from poison, you can wipe out your entire village. Um, and again, you, from what I have experienced, you sort of want to specifically target uh, research in, tr in the in the tree area that you want to go for. You don't always want to get everything right away, right? You want to go with what you need. As of right now, we're gonna do kitchen and scavenger hut. Scavenger hunt allows us to build outposts like on Ambu that allow us to like pick this quarry, pick this forest, and just get resources from it. And that's important because there can be villages outside that we can send our villagers to, and they'll actually gather and recruit more people to join your cause. So join your village, that is. Then I think we're going to be doing is uh, the dung collector because Ambu poops naturally. <laughs> so anytime we can collect as much Ambu fecal matter um, as villager possible, we should do that. Um, okay, so now our villagers are still doing the thing. If you're wondering again why it's taking so long is one, we're going on speed one, but also they are making the trip. I mean, this is how your parents got to school. They walked all the way over here to the pile of berries, then walked all the way back. Look at this guy. He is literally, he's moving to pile of berries. He would rather, I don't know how much berries they eat. They probably eat three at a time. They eat one berry at a time. Let's just, let's just figure this out real quick. Let me just let you know how inefficient these villagers can be, okay? We have one villager working this. He, I'm gonna assume it's this guy. Workplace is a berry farmer, okay? He's a berry farmer, all right? His name is Guinea, all right? We love Guinea. Guinea's a great guy. He's happy. He actually loves this place. He has a lot to say about it, but he loves this place. He works here at the berry farm. He loves working there. Pick two berries, and he put them in here in storage, okay? Now, we looked at this researcher, Edgar. He eats one berry. He holds it in his hand. He's gonna eat that. So if you only need to eat one berry, instead of eating it from the berry farm, Dude, my guy is gonna walk all the way through this forest and he's gonna pick one berry here and the pile of berries to eat. That is psychotic. Someone needs to tell him not to do that. And there's no way to micromanage and, and be like, like, Guinea, don't, just don't do that. But he's gonna do it. He's gonna walk all the way over here. He's gonna eat. And once they're done eating, by the way, they're gonna eat here. They're not gonna like store, like they don't have pockets or anything. So he's gonna then walk back and do the berry farm. But there's berries right here. Like, what's stopping him? I wish I could give Guinea here, our guy, our main man, and just be like, dude, literally eat one berry here. I'm not gonna be mad at you, it's totally fine. You know what I think the issue is, I think it's because this counts as, as food available. So, let's see. And there must be other foods. Oh, here's the pantry. Oh, can we haul this? Can we haul the berry? I don't know if we can, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> I don't know if that was the, the main issue and that's why they're not hauling it. This is obviously not the intention, okay? Like, I really don't think, like, a villager would want to eat somewhere very far away when there's a berry, like, right here, and they only eat one. Because initially, my thought was that they eat three, and that's why they need to go to the big style, but I think they only just need to eat the one. Yeah, I mean, he's eating it. I mean, look, the researcher is like, it's over here, dude. And we need to build this. So I like to actually start off with two researchers just because it's just gonna help with speed, you know? Eventually, you're gonna want three early on, uh, depending on the severity of things that you need researched. But right now, we should be okay. Up ahead is a cold snap. Gonna be a problem, but, you know, we'll deal with it. Our beets can actually grow in the, in the freeze. They don't grow quickly, but they can grow. So I've been playing for about an hour now, and it looks like this might be a good place to leave off before we hit the cold snap, uh, before we hit the nomads. So um, yeah, if you're enjoying this um, and you want to see more, then uh, let me know, because I'm going to do more anyway, whether you like it or not. But let me see if I can just build another thing here. I know I said goodbye to you. I was going to do my outro, because I never do outros. But let me see if I can just plop that there. You know, we don't have to build that right away. I'll just go ahead and cue that as like, super low priority 
Okay, we're getting stones. All right, so we have base buildings here. We just need people to build this, and then we're good. Well, we're going to disable the berry farm and have uh, Guinea not just do whatever. <laughs> just do something else because we have enough food, I think. Because um, they're just, they're just going to go here anyway. But all right, that's it. I'm going to say goodbye in this episode. This is what we have so far. This is our initial setup. Go ahead and mock me about my city planning because I'm very bad at it down below in the comments. And I will see you in episode two. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, I mean, if it hasn't gone away yet, feel free, go to my early access review of The Wandering Village. And if no one else has commented, I still have one Steam key left to give away. Go to that video and comment and perhaps you can win a Steam key. Oh, cool, we did our research. Scavenger hunt. All right, scavenger hut. Okay, bye. Bye, 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 bye.